I think that in our last class, uh, we have um, a very good debate uh, on the uh, uh, question uh, if uh, Roman Catholicism could be considered as a fundamentalistic sect. And uh, our departure point was the history of uh, Hans King, who passed away uh, this year, uh, one of the most influential and most brilliant uh, Catholic theologian, who was uh, all his uh, life uh, uh, popularizing uh, Roman Catholicism as a Catholic priest, uh, on the one hand, but on the other hand, as a Catholic priest who was deprived of uh, by authority, a Vatican authority to teach in the name of the church. He was also struggling and fighting against uh, his own institution to gain more uh, freedom, more space of, for, of freedom for academic research. And I, I think that this was quite an uh, interesting example how to combine this being part of the community and in the same time trying to change this community. Uh, and I think that uh, what I'm proposing uh, you to, to reflect upon uh, this week is a um, similar, although uh, different uh, approach, similar because uh, also in media, on, on which uh, role I would like to draw your attention and to focus your attention on how media are influencing and shaping uh, Catholic Church, but not only Catholic Church, we can apply the same mechanism how uh, media are influencing or how they are influenced also by a religious institution and this is the moment when we see this uh, delicate balance between uh, a powerful religious institution and media which uh, try to uh, criticize or to describe uh, how far uh, religion or religious institutions are really serving society serving democracy uh, and as a departure point or kind of case study, I propose you to, to read two texts uh, written by the same author. His name is uh, Jason Berry, who is himself Catholic and a journalist, freelancer, a journalist. So he's not serving any big companies, but in force of his own... Uh, um, intellect and research and, and sensitivity, he tried to draw attention of his uh, readers, of his uh, viewers also, because he's making also films, uh, on uh, topics which uh, he considered as uh, of uh, very import uh, vital importance for uh, health uh, of the society, of democratic society, because he is uh, based in uh, New Orleans and he wrote, by the way, uh, not only about uh, Catholicism, uh, his own institution, but uh, his real love is jazz. So he wrote about jazz, he wrote about his city, New Orleans, the city of thousand dreams, I think is the title. He just finished a film about it. So his life, so to say, is uh, uh, more um, focused on um, music, culture, and not so much on the church. And uh, nevertheless, as an open-minded uh, journalist, he uh, started to describe a certain phenomena which are disturbing. And uh, the first uh, uh, short article is, is uh, just 20 pages, is entitled 
votes of silence coda to the 20, 21st polish edition moral dynamics of the papacy uh, i have a uh, fortune to have this uh, original version uh, in english uh, so i share it with with you but for those who perhaps will be interested in reading more, the same book, Bows of Silence, uh, which was published originally in 2004 and in Polish uh, translation 2014, and now uh, in April, exactly in this month, in those uh, these days, is published uh, in Polish exactly with this new postwords uh, or afterwards by uh, Jason Berry. Um, why uh, this uh, article is a, a good departure point to be confronted with extremely delicate uh, and I would say even dark side of the history of recent history of Roman Catholicism. Here we have a, a crime, a horrible crime, of sexual abuse of the Catholic priest um, uh, against children. And, uh, well, we can say, and this is the strategy to defend the Catholic Church, that this, it happens not only in, in the Church, it is actually happening and even in, in larger degrees in, in families, in schools, everywhere. But what, what we have here is the very special, and I would say even uh, well-structured uh, uh, dynamic to, to deny the presence of this crime in the church, to hide it. And without uh, effort of journalists, we will not have mm, uh, public awareness how uh, important it is and how necessary it is to, to, to fight against. And perhaps you already are familiar with some events which uh, he is analyzing. I will mention just a few. Uh, one is this... Uh, uh, legendary uh, of Christ, a uh, religious order founded in Mexico by uh, Marcial Maciel de Golado, uh, who was a charismatic fundraiser who brought a lot of money to the church, but in the same time he was pedophile. He was very violent against even his own uh, members of his own order, but he was also bigamist, so he has two wives and his own children, uh, and he abused also the, those children. So it's a very, I would say, a criminal story, but what is uh, more important that he was protected uh, for decades by, uh, by the Vatican. And this is interesting to, to ask the question why. What is behind this uh, protection? And uh, uh, Jerry um, uh, Barry Yasson uh, describe uh, this uh, in details in his articles. Also, a uh, very important report um, describing uh, the crimes of another. Uh, church uh, hierarch, uh, the Cardinal Makarik, is also included in, in, in this coda, in this uh, chapter, which describe what is going on in these years uh, in the church and how exactly the professional journalism or filmmaker writers are helping victims to, to give them a voice and to uh, ask for not only for forgiveness but also for financial compensation and you will see numbers of, of millions or even billion of dollars paid by church to to the victims or to the lawyers who are defending them so this is one 
And another is a uh, bigger, thicker book, and I don't know how many of you will be able and willing to read it, but in order to have your own opinion, it's necessary to, to read uh, a lot, but also to read the best sources. And this uh, best source is, uh, again, a book uh, not translated into Polish, although it's very important, Lead um, Us Not Into Temptation. Catholic Priests and the Sexual Abuse of Children uh, by uh, Jason Perry. And it was the first path-breaking description of this horrible crime in the Catholic Church, 1992. And uh, it really provoked the, the massive uh, attention, public attention, media attention to this fact. And uh, in 2000, it has uh, the second edition, and uh, Barry described exactly what was going on in public sphere in this uh, eight years from first edition to second edition. So to conclude, I would uh, suggest that we will focus our um, debate in class uh, not so much on case studies, because they are, we can analyze them, but this is not so important. More important is, is the dynamic, how it works, the role of uh, bishops, of local priests, the role of, uh, of the Vatican, and the tension between the religious institution and politics the tension between these institutions and media. So uh, uh, our course is focused on religious fundamentalism. And we can, as we did uh, in previous meetings, we were trying to identify the, the most uh, silent features of fundamentalism. But uh, I, I would suggest and I will encourage you to see uh, reading uh, Jason Berry, how um, uh, media are helping to deconstruct fundamentalism, to demonstrate how damaging the presence of fundamentalistic uh, institution in, in public sphere is for our democracies. And I think this is of, of a very important uh, a value also for our being active participants of the public sphere, that we can raise our voice, that we can articulate arguments, that certain uh, attitudes or certain way of solving problems are not compatible with democracy with uh, distributive justice. So they, you, you see a lot of ramification in different, in, in different uh, directions. So um, I will uh, leave you with uh, two questions. Uh, first of all, um, how uh, the problems described by uh, Jason Berry in his uh, article and his book are related to our uh, principal problem of religious fundamentalism. Which relations uh, do you see between both? And uh, the second, uh, how media, uh, or generally speaking, also films, because the most important, I would say, the most um, uh, uh, having a biggest impact on the public debate, they were not articles in the magazines or newspapers, but uh, films, spotlight, uh, uh, don't tell to anybody, uh, of brothers uh, Sekielski, we have two films by them all dealing with the same topic. So how um, the pressure, the constant pressure of media, of, of filmmakers 
change the, the church, how differently priests, bishops, and even popes are speaking about the same problem after the massive attacks of media on, on inability or unwillingness to deal with these painful problems. So I hope that uh, we will have a very vivid uh, debate on the role of media in deconstructing uh, uh, fundamentalistic organizations in our present uh, world.